Humankind in the 21st century is confronted with various global issues that cannot be solved by one country or region, including global warming, preservation of biological resources, infectious disease outbreaks, earthquakes, and tsunami. These issues have a particularly large effect on developing countries that have a weak economic base, requiring solutions coordinated with developed countries. The Science and Technology Research Partnership for Sustainable Development, known as SATREPS, promotes international joint research conducted by Japan and developing countries. New technologies are being developed in order to find solutions to global issues and build human capacities that benefit both Japan and developing countries. JST, that promotes science and technology, is coordinating work with JICA that is in charge of official development assistance known as ODA. The Iskandar Development Region is located in Johor State in Malaysia, along the border with Singapore. Malaysia designated this area as a special economic zone in 2006 and has an aggressive program to attract industry and corporations. A goal of creating 8% economic growth per year in the region that will have a population of 3 million by the year 2025 has been established. However, how to effectively maintain a sustainable regional environment while facilitating economic growth is a challenge common throughout Asia that is striving to promote development. A project designed to find a solution to this challenge supported by the Science and Technology Research Partnership for Sustainable Development, known as SATREPS, is about to be started. It is entitled, Development of Low Carbon Society Scenarios for Asian Regions. Professor Yuzuru Matsuoka of the Graduate School of Engineering at Kyoto University is the leader on the Japanese side. His group conducts research on global environmental problems with a focus on climate change and energy issues. Exactly what does development of low carbon society scenarios involve? Basically, we visualize what society will look like in 2025 or 2050. We then think about what kind of society in which the people would like to live, ask people in the region to tell us the direction of development, how industries should evolve, and about other issues. After this, we determine the preparations that must be made to achieve these goals and establish quantitative and numerical targets. This is what we call a scenario. Let's take a look at Kyoto as one example of a scenario that has taken the first step in achieving a low-carbon society. For example, initiatives have been established to transform Kyoto into a city where people walk and conventional cars are replaced by railways, bus service, and eco-friendly cars. It outlines the type of lifestyle, city structure, and industry to facilitate a low-carbon society that is appropriate for Kyoto and requires a transformation in energy demand in order to achieve a low-carbon society. In Iskandar, if no measures are implemented, the targeted economic growth and increase in population will result in a four-fold increase in CO2 emissions in 2025 compared to 2005. Our goal for this project is to limit the increase in CO2 emissions to 1.5 times the 2005 level. In order to achieve this goal, specific target values for reducing CO2 emissions need to be established for households, transportation, and other types of social infrastructure, as well as for industry and energy supply and demand, with all of these being incorporated into policies. The scenario will stipulate the design for achieving the low-carbon society of the future and will be formulated in cooperation with Japanese researchers. In addition to local research institutes, regional development agencies and the central government will participate in this project.
The most important thing is that people support the activity of creating scenarios. Since it is an extremely long-range plan, with goals established for 2025 or 2050, people need to keep this in mind. In addition, strong leadership that is supported by the people is another vital element. Without people's support and strong leadership, the plan cannot succeed. Professor Matsuoka says it's important that citizens, the government, and administration be involved in achieving the vision for a low-carbon society, since it requires structural and organizational change of society. People involved in this project from Malaysia came to Japan at the end of September. Nice to meet you again. They visited Kyoto and Shiga, where these research techniques have already been implemented. They also visited the Tsukuba Experimental Low Carbon City and exchanged opinions with the regional policymakers and citizens there. We can use uh, to implement uh, the low carbon society in the Iskandar area, and eventually, uh, we will be formulating policies. Uh, to extend to the other areas in uh, Peninsula Malaysia. As we can see, um, pollution is not only contribute um, towards uh, uh, or coming from economic development, uh, which is actually contributing from the industry itself. That is why um, we need uh, to ensure that the strategy that we lay out um, would be able to be fully understood uh, by the players of the industry uh, and for them to understand and to fully participate and uh, support all this. So that is the biggest uh, challenge that we uh, will be facing. Yeah, as a Malaysian researcher and especially in the university, we would like to uh, promote this low carbon society by having more staff training as well as um, uh, capacity building for Malaysia as well as for Asian region. Research institutes in Malaysia and Japan will continue to collect various information and apply quantitative models in an appropriate manner in order to start creating specific scenarios and roadmaps for the future. Professor Matsuoka has taken an aggressive approach to joint research with various countries in Asia on a wide range of environmental issues. He wishes to disseminate development of low-carbon society scenarios throughout Asia. Indonesia has its eye on Malaysia. Vietnam also looks to Malaysia to see what kind of things they are doing. On the other hand, these countries are competitive, but realize they must cooperate. However, circumstances vary in each country and they devise methods that suit local conditions in order to flexibly respond to these circumstances. I think that this can be very powerful in creating low-carbon societies around the world.